Welcome, everybody. Uh, I think we're going to get started. Some people may drift in as we get started, but we'll, we'll get underway. I think I know almost everyone, but if you don't know me, I'm Ryan O'Donnell. I'm the city councilor for Ward 3. And we, at the outset, let me say thank you to our public safety personnel who have come here today. Uh, Chief of Police, Jody Casper. Um, Fire Rescue Chief, Dwayne Nichols. And we also have a sister, Assistant District Attorney, uh, Matthew Thomas, and also from the District Attorney's Office, uh, Lori Loisell, in her capacity as the Director of Community Outreach. So we're, we're well represented today. Let me also recognize Council President Bill Dwight, who is here tonight, and Ward 4, City Councilor Gina Louise Shara. And we also have members of the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association um, in attendance as well. So thank you very much. Um, let me say just a couple things. One is about process, how I think we should run tonight's meeting. Um, and that is simply, I'm going to act as a moderator, so if you would raise your hand, I'll call on you, we'll prevent each, each other from, from talking over um, the other person. And I'm going to try and go around at least once so everyone has their, their fair say before going back for a second and third comments and that kind of thing. Uh, and the other thing, just briefly, is something that is important for me to say to you, which is, um, you know, first, as, as your representative in city government, I want you to know that I take the situation that we're here to talk about tonight very seriously. I know our public safety personnel take it very seriously. Our mayor takes it very seriously. Um, you have my commitment to make sure you have all the information you need uh, to the extent possible at every step of the process. Um, and I will do my best to make sure that happens. And finally, um, you know, something that uh, we have a lot of concerns about. I hope we have a measured and proportional response to it and go forward based on the facts and the information that we have. Uh, but still, I would say that I want us to remember that Ward 3, and I think the city in general, is, is a strong community. And whatever strength we can take from that as we address these concerns, I think is important. And I try to remember that, so I'd like to say that to you at the outset as well. I don't want to delay anymore. Uh, our public safety personnel are the people who we are here to talk to. And I'd like to invite our chief of police to begin in whatever way he thinks best. So, Chief Kathy. Good evening. Uh, happy to be here uh, and answer any questions that you may have. Uh, we put out a hello. Uh, we put out a press release a short time ago that hopefully most of you have read. I'm sure you're familiar with the details of that press release. Uh, since the time of that release, there was an additional fire reported, but just be warned that, that that, we believe, occurred during the original time frame. So since the press release has come out, we don't have any information that there have been any new fires since that time. We just had an additional fire reported on Friday evening at around 5.30, and that was to a um, construction fence and some kind of material that was going over that. So uh, not too much has changed since that press release came out. Uh, we did put it out. We wanted to make sure that you were all aware of what was going on in, in your neighborhood. We wanted to ask you all to be diligent about calling us if any if you saw anything out of the ordinary, if you saw someone acting suspiciously. Since we put that out, we have received a couple of phone calls from people who have seen folks or seen activity they thought was suspicious, and our officers have gone over and checked that out. So we're actively following up any phone calls that, that you're providing to us and, and continuing to do our regular investigation. Well, I'll answer any questions, you know, as we get to the tail end of this, and I'll turn it over to the fire chief. Uh, yeah, just to uh, kind of reiterate what Chief Casper said, the, the thoughts of the press release was really just to be proactive and to give, you know, you as residents information of what's happening and what's going on out there. Uh, and it really, we really look to you as the people that know what's going on in your neighborhood and, uh, and really are, are the ones that are aware. And you can help us be our eyes out there, as Chief Casper said. You know, if there's something suspicious or out of the ordinary going on, please call. Uh, that's going to help us just check it out and uh, see what's happening out there. Uh, but the whole thoughts of the press release was just to give you the information and uh, you know look for kind of you for assistance to help us with this uh, to kind of figure out what's going on. Okay, thank thank you very much. Um, I'd like to invite the district attorney's representatives if you folks want to come up. You're certainly welcome. To Certainly. Good evening. My name is Matthew Thomas, and I'm a prosecutor for uh, DA Sullivan's office. And um, 
I was one of the prosecutors on the Bay case, so I'm familiar with Ward 3. Uh, and I'm reluctant to go into exactly what's going on with the investigation uh, into the fires now, but I thought it might be some solace for you all to know that the same people that are in place for this investigation that were in place for the Bay investigation. So uh, I'm working with some of the same police officers, certainly the same fire marshals to try and um, recognize what patterns, if any, there are um, in trying to get to the to the heart of the problem. So um, again, I would just like to echo what the chiefs have said about details that you may see. If you see something, say something. Because uh, uh, something that's innocuous or, or, um, um, or that may seem innocuous in the context of a larger pattern or in the context of other tips, um, it could be very helpful because um, um, part of what um, cracked open the Bay case was uh, a tip from a friend uh, saying that, that he was unaccounted for during the time in question. So um, Ms. Loisel uh, is, is, uh, came here to, to help describe a way for you to uh, convey information that you may want to. And again, thank you. Yeah, so my name is Laurie Loisel and I actually live in Ward 3. I live on Grant Avenue. I've lived there since 1991. But I realized I moved to Northampton in 1983 and for many years I lived in various apartments so I kind of lived all over Ward 3 actually. <laughs> so I'm, I, I feel like it's my place and um, I just want to make sure everybody knows that I know how you feel because I remember, you know, the time between when the fires happened on December 27th and when Anthony Bay was arrested, I slept in my living room, you know, and I know a lot of us did that, and it was really scary when we didn't know who set those fires, and and also when we realized there had been all these other fires that, I don't know, just were also set by him that we didn't know how, you know, what it was leading up to, so now, I at least I had my feelings changed about small fires, which I kind of think that I used to have this idea that it was just a mischief, but and maybe it is, but maybe it isn't. So I think I understand how you feel. And the DA's office and police department, fire department, we all kind of get the context that this is happening in. And the chief might say something different, but we, so if you disagree, let me know. <laughs> we have these flyers, which is um, where you can text a tip anonymously. So I'm sure, like, that's the other thing I've noticed when I walk around the neighborhood, those, those posters are back up that used to be up there. So. Um, it's just it's just eerily reminiscent of something that was awful. Um, but at any rate, so there are you can call the police department, you can call the arson watch program. But if you want to do something anonymously, we have a text a tip program where you can text a tip. It will be anonymous. It actually gets picked up by a state police sergeant, Tom Bakey, and he then communicates it to whoever needs to know. So that's another way you can give information. It's not meant for um, what you might call 911 for. It's meant for information. But if you see something in progress, you want to call 911. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Okay. Thank, I think we all appreciate your efforts being here tonight in addition to what you're doing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. So, so thank you. And I think now would be a good time to ask uh, the residents, if anyone has any questions or comments to share. And Councillor Carney from Ward 1 is joining us as well. So, welcome, Councillor. Does anyone have one after Yes, please. No, um, and if you, would, if you feel comfortable, state your name. So um, Susan Parker from Graves Avenue. And um, excuse me if you've already addressed this because I came in a little late. But my concern not only is what has happened to date, but it seems as though there's always an escalation factor with these things. Can you, someone in, in your experience, address that issue for us? Yeah, it, yeah it, it's, like I say, with these fires here, we're, we're looking at them, uh, and there's always the concern of uh, when fires start that people typically uh, will escalate. They'll start small and it usually grows. It's, it's not the, always the case, but it does happen. So that's why we look at the small fires uh, and really try to pay attention to them, what's going on. Uh, it's probably just a good time to go into fire investigation in the city, uh, just to give you an overview of what it's made up of. Uh, basically, it's, it's police officers, firefighters, and then we have the state fire marshal's office. And, uh, and in this case here, we're certainly working closely with the DA's office. So it's quite a team of people that uh, basically are looking at all these fires and are trying to determine what we have and what's going on there. 
which I think is important to understand that there's a real team approach to fire fire investigation in the city here. But typically what we do see with some of these fires is that it does escalate, and that's one of the concerns we have with these. It's, it's kind of grass fires, and some people could say, well, it's grass, but we're, we're just concerned that, you know, does it escalate up? And uh, that's one of the things we're looking at. Yeah, my name is Fred Zimnock, and um, I live on 23 Pomeroy Terrace. I've been there 40 years. I was there during the, uh, the Bay Arson Spree. Uh, we had three meetings with the mayor and the two chiefs. Uh, first with December 2007, then we had on March 24, 2008, and then the last one was uh, November 24th, 2009. <coughs> so basically, it looks like he was running around for about two and a half years starting fires. And during these meetings, I tried to understand, you know, how the city was handling this. Who, what department, the police, the fire, or the DA has qualified arson investigators. It seemed to me in the old, well, during those days, the police department was doing all the arson investigation. So, so right, right now, uh, in the fire department, I have one certified fire investigator, and I have two others that are working towards their certification. And we're working, uh, basically the police detective, I think he's working on his certification. So we, we really, looked at fire investigation and are really trying to get our training up over the past few years we've been proactive in getting our people out there as i say a team approach uh in the police department we have two fire investigators uh that, that are assigned to investigate fires and on the fire side we have three and then basically all those people involved in fire investigation work closely with with matt thomas and, and the da's office down there uh, we have access to the state fire marshal's office which basically has three fire investigators in Western Mass that work closely with us. And as I said, when we go into fire investigations, uh, it's really a team approach. Uh, really any size fire, it's really police fire and the, and the state fire marshal's office uh, are consulted and uh, certainly look at the scene. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and the, uh, the state fire marshal, is there the type of unit that will do anything for you? Um, if as a prosecutor, I need something uh, um, even uh, on a recent case, even though a trooper had retired, he still uh, worked with me uh, pro bono, essentially for free, uh, trying to get uh, the case uh, to where it needed to be. So it's a good, it's a very good unit. And and the firefighter that the chief uh, mentioned, uh, the certified investigator, he has an almost encyclopedic memory of fires in Northampton. It's amazing to talk to him. You just because uh, when we were talking about these most recent fires, he he was immediately comparing them with other fires that had happened years ago that he just kind of passed in his mind. It's amazing to talk to the guy. Anyone else? Yes, please. So I'm just wondering, like, how concerned are you that this, I mean, so far it's been small fires, and, and it did seem like mischief to me. And so I haven't been terribly concerned, but now I'm hearing all the stuff, the press release, and hearing other stuff, the neighbors are talking about it. And, um, how concerned are you? are you? Are people sleeping in their <laughs> living rooms, or? You? I'm not. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's, you know, there were the six incidents that occurred over that, that time frame that we put out. We haven't had any since then, so certainly, I think, me, you know, that does provide some sense of relief. Right. When was the last one? Uh, the, the last one was the 21st. The last one reported was just this past Friday, but that occurred within that original time frame. Um, so it, it's been a little bit. Uh, you know, it could happen anywhere in the city, and that's kind of the reality of, of fire setting. So you live in an area where there has been six in, in that time period. Um, it's like a six week time period, isn't it? Or no, it's a couple of weeks. No, <coughs> yeah, it's much bit shorter than that. It's about eight, eight to ten days. Oh, time period. Yeah, it's a shorter time period. Anyone else? I am Nancy Mahavik. I'm on Bay Avenue, and I have three questions for you, actually. Uh, the first one, uh, prior to um, Bay's being arrested, we were. It was recommended that we turn our porch lights on. Is that a recommendation that you have now? No, no, I think so. Um, I, you know, because criminal activity is uh, is 
something that happens in darkness, you know, so under cover of darkness, or um, a lot of the beanies that we get, the, the point of entry will be in a, in a window in the back away from the roof, you know, or, or covered by a bush or something like that. So, um, so that's why that suggestion is made. Um, you know, we're not trying to, to, to create an anxiety without cause or, or make people upset about it, but, you know, I live in Northampton. I've lived in Northampton for a long time, and I remember, uh, you know, December 27th of 2009, you woke up and you could just smell the smoke. It was, it, so, you know, it, I don't think anybody's forgotten that. Certainly you all haven't forgotten that, or you wouldn't be here. Um, so, um, it's an ounce of prevention, maybe. Second question is, um, uh, how have you ramped up at all to be able to handle multiple arsons within very like within hours of one another? I'm thinking both the bay and back in 1991, my house was one of three on um, King Street that was lit. As I said, fire investigation is a team approach in the city, and uh, it, it was pretty phenomenal. I think in the bay case that we actually had a state task force out here. <laughs> that within 10 hours, I would say we had that up and operating. No, I mean being able to respond to, let's say, two or three fires that are lit within a couple from, of hours. From the fire response or Yeah, fire response. Uh, I, basically, in the Bay case, we actually have what we call a 10 alarm run card, which basically spells out that once the resources of on-duty people, uh, of apparatus depletes, that they're committed to other calls, we start calling in other communities. Uh, we actually went out to that 10 alarms during the Bay case. Uh, so, I mean, we tested it, and it works, uh, and uh, so I reviewed it, and it, it's good to go. So, I mean, it's, it's very, very workable. Uh, I never thought in my career I would see us use it, uh, but uh, it did, and it worked, and, and it functioned properly. So, we, we're prepared. And the same thing goes for the police department. Regardless if it's a fire or any other sort of incident that, that depletes all of our staffing, we have the ability to reach out to the next shift and ask them to come in, which they usually do. Question number three. Third question. Um, She's my neighbor, so she gets. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's a house that's like two or three doors down from the place where the first fires were set, um, and they had uh, ornamental grass in the front as well, uh, like five. They almost looked like haystacks that were tied. Do you know if those were lit intentionally by the homeowners so that they could? prevent an arson from occurring in that area, or is that a potential another site that maybe hasn't been reported yet? I can't tell you the specific address, but one of our investigators was out speaking with people and noticed the new uh, ornamental grasses that were burned and hadn't been reported, knocked on a door and determined that those had been set by that homeowner to clear them and burn down the stump. So I don't know if it's the same yeah, house, but that sure. did occur. I would think so, but, uh, but yeah, they did it intentionally. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, considering the tragedy of 2009, it seems like our community, both in police, fire, and city government, should be uniquely prepared for a situation like this um, because of that experience. And so I'm wondering what, if anything, is police, fire, the city government doing differently based on the experience of 2009? You know what I mean? Like, cause when that happened in 2009, we didn't necessarily have such a recent knowledge of it, but it being so new, I would hope that from that experience we've learned how to deal with it differently, I guess. Or we would have, we've learned new procedures. To I, I, I think our <coughs> first step was to be proactive by letting you know as the residents. Uh, was certainly uh, back during the Bay case that, you know, we were still piecing things together and we're trying to really figure out what we had. Uh, I know Chief Casper and I, we talked very early on when, when we discovered that the fires in this area were happening. And our, both of us, you know, our first impression was we, we need to probably inform the community. And uh, so I think coming out of that was really to get the word out to you uh, as residents and, and people in the neighborhood, one that can help us keep you know, eyes open and, and know what's going on out there. And uh, I think on the, on the back side of that, you know, we very early on brought the DA's office in and uh, certainly the support from the state fire marshal's office. So I, I think we're really well prepared uh, to be able to get that, and I think that's what we learned from kind of the Bay case was let's put the resources to it early and uh, try to figure out what we have and what, what's going on out there. And just to follow up along those lines, has it been considered to use the snow emergency phone number to let the town know? I mean, we get announced when there's a snow emergency, it might be something that 
could at least give another option to reach people and let them understand that, you know, whether it's calling the tip line, you know, I mean, there's nothing, there might be another option to communicate to people. I'm a little curious about the, I'm not sure if anybody here has uh, knowledge about the profile of the kind of person that does this, or is there a normal profile? And I guess I'm wondering about the, the ramping up that happens. I know back eight years ago, there were a number of years where we had car fires and trash can fires. So I'm just wondering, is there a normal profile? I know there's no crystal ball, but I don't know if that was a big thing. Yeah, no, that was one of the things that we struggled with with the, the prosecution of Tony Bay was trying to figure out um, what the pattern was or what the trigger was. Um, and as, try as we might, we never really found anything that was consistent with when the fires were lit or or um, or, or who the targets were. It, it's it seemed uh, entirely random uh, in, in some ways. So. Um, and uh, and even after the plea, we weren't entirely sure uh, about the why. Uh, um, so you know, it was just uh, you know, it's something that we definitely scratched our heads about for a long time. Um, Early on, if, if he was he was hitting cars and houses close to his own house. Oh, so, so is that? Uh, yes, so absolutely. Difficult? No, we found out later that he was, yeah, that, that there was one of them was in the driveway adjacent to his house. I mean, he set that car on fire. Um, and uh, it, but, In his own driveway? No, the, the driveway adjacent to where he was. Okay. Um, so. And two houses down, possibly. Oh, yeah. Two no, years it, before. Yeah, that was, I mean, we, again, there wasn't really a trigger, like, it wasn't on a certain day, or there, there wasn't like, uh, like he'd lose a bed or something, or would be intoxicated or something. There wasn't, there was never any consistency to it, um, none that we could determine anyway. Um, so, because we were looking for modus operandi, you know, if somebody does, has a unique trademark with their, with the, the way they commit a crime, then it triggers certain evidentiary things, with the way you can prove your case and the kind of evidence that you can bring in. So that was some, definitely something that we were looking for. And, and even after his arrest and the fires not so mysteriously stopped, um, we were trying to get that evidence in, you know, to just, to, but you know, even that was kind of beyond us. We weren't able to get that in front of the court because it wasn't something that the court recognized. But have you ever seen research stating that, or showing that um, arsonists tend to, to set fires close to their own homes? Uh, yeah, the marshals, yeah, the, I mean, yeah, the marshals are, the marshals are very in tune with, and, and, and they're, they're better to speak to the why than, the, or the, the kind of the profile than I am, but that's why the DA has an emphasis on juvenile uh, fire setting and trying to reach out to kids that are setting fires and diverting them out of that pattern of behavior, because that's really a, a kind of a common thing. Um, if a kid is setting a fire, then that's that's not a good sign. So that 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 is a, a commonality or universal that that you kind of see in, in that line of work. I guess that's kind of what I was getting at. Is there also research that shows that there's smaller fires first, maybe brush or car, and then it moves to houses? I mean, is that a normal pattern? Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily. I, I'm reluctant to say yes to that because then you know the inference is, is that there will necessarily be house fires now, and I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, so, um, I mean, we're definitely trying to, and in, in looking at the fires that we know about so far, um, we're trying to find a pattern to see like if they happen at a certain time of night or on a certain day of the week. Um, we're trying to to zero in on um, geography, um, you know, for obvious reasons, and and uh, I mean. I haven't seen a pattern yet, but that doesn't mean there isn't one. I thought that uh, the fires, several of them were like mid-afternoon and early morning, not not middle of the night. Weren't there more daytime lightings this? Yes. Yep, yeah, some were, yeah. yeah. That's a, they're kind of mixed. That's what we found in all of these is that they're kind of mixed. And we're not even up here saying necessarily that they are they are all connected. We don't know right. that, and we're very hesitant to say that. We're, it's only that they all occurred in that short period, but 
you know, a tent fire and the ornamental grasses and the barrel fire, we don't know if they're even connected. Uh, <clears throat> I, I guess you keep track of all the fires that happen. Are these fires, neglecting the fact they're in a group, say if you look last year, the previous year, the previous year, how many grass fires or incidental fires did you have in three years ago or two years ago or one year ago? Is this something totally out of the ordinary? Chief Nichols can speak best to how many fires. It, it's, I mean, what, what heightened us to this situation here was the area, uh, very quickly. It was kind of a, a two-week period and we had all these fires in there in, in a certain neighborhood. That, brings us, uh, brought our attention to it. And that's where we started bringing the resources to look at it. So it, it really was, we, we look at every fire out there uh, and we do analyze uh, where things are happening and what's going on. Uh, and it's a lot of things that our investigators do uh, as part of their job, trying to look at it. So they early on came forward to both Chief Casper and me and kind of said, uh, we, we should look at this situation here, uh, which we did. And, uh, and you know, then hence the press release and stuff coming out. So last year you could have had six grass fires in the early part of the year or during the year and other incidental fires during the year. It's just that these happen in one spot? Yes. I mean, we do, we do, I mean, we do every call we go on for the fire department, a report gets made out. And uh, we do track where it is and uh, what happened, what was the case that we went out there for. So, you know, we could have went to six grass fires, but if they were spread out amongst the city, uh, you know, my investigators would have said, well, it's, you know, cause here and there. Uh, this one here was really the grouping in the neighborhood that brought our attention to it. So the other grass fires that you have seen, say last year, they were actually set, they weren't actually occurring from a bolt of lightning or something? Uh, I'm not saying that they were set, it was basically that we, what I used to this situation was the fires in the neighborhood, where we didn't have the causes to that. Uh, so we try to take a look at every fire to see if we can determine what causes it, uh, but usually it's got to be something that will lead us to uh, Lead, lead us to the indication of was it set or was it an accidental fire and things like that. Wait, so I have a question. Are you saying that you don't know for sure if those fires in the two week period actually all were set? You're still looking into that? Uh, right now it's under investigation. Uh, as Chief Casper said, uh, we're not even positive that they're linked right now. Yeah. So, okay. so from what our investigators have found. We're trying to find out if they were set. So, so what our investigators find, part, part of fire investigation is what you eliminate is causes. So basically what you want to do is start ruling out what are possible causes out there. And when we say that they're undetermined, it means that we couldn't determine exactly what the cause was. So in these fires here, our investigators looked at them and weren't able to come up with a conclusive, it was a bolt of lightning or it was a cigarette. So that's what you know we determined with that. So there wasn't uh, an explanation of why they happened. So that's why we, we kind of say that they're under investigation. Anyone else? Yes. A question for Chief Casper. So the, I just am a little concerned about the tent fire and where that occurred and the the tents on property that's not theirs. And since we know we have fires there and dangerous activity there, are the police looking at enforcing the trespass orders there? What are we doing? Yeah, that's a good question. The, a lot of the property back there is privately owned by different businesses. And that's maybe national, the that's national Grid, right? Some is National Grid, right? Yeah. It's all mixed kind of where it is. I spoke with National Grid like six months ago. They had called actually asking us to help them move some people off their property, and we do that. But it's not normal for us to go on to other businesses or other people's private property and then ask people to be removed unless the business or property owner asks us to do that. Whenever they do, we always go out and happy to do that. And I know we had just done that just before, like around six months ago when I had contact with National Grid and moved someone from back there. I do know that that whole strip back there is an area that attracts folks to stay. Uh, we've certainly been back there before. Uh, you know, tents, boxes are set up. Um, some, you know, our officers go back there and do checks sometimes. Sometimes we get calls for well-being checks. Uh, we don't generally move people out of the area unless we're asked to do that. Is there anything that we can do? I mean, since, since there was a fire set 100 yards from my house, right. Uh, right. is there anything that we can do that uh, uh, about maybe facilitate National Grid taking a little more uh, care of the property? Yeah, I mean, if you wanted to make a phone call to National Grid and, and explain what's going on from a, you know, they, they, they may or may not live in the area, but if not, they may not have an understanding of what's going on. And if you explain your concern, uh, they may be willing to work with you. And certainly we would go out and meet them and, and help if they needed it. And honestly, most folks, when we ask them to move, they just pack up and move. It's not, a, not there's not a lot of conflict in that normally. 
wouldn't it be better to have the city councilor call or the mayor call as opposed to <laughs> right here as opposed to, <laughs> <laughs> as opposed yeah, to, no, as to private talk about I mean, this I've okay. called the utilities and you know they yeah we'll take care of it and, and nothing happens but it seems to me in this instance maybe city councilor or mayor might want to call yeah that's the kind of thing I think we can follow up with about after yeah. after the meeting for sure okay anyone else yes Bill Valley Eastern Avenue mm -hmm. Um, what were the numbers of fires that you're talking about in the last couple months or last month that are, um, I don't know, like the, I don't like to use the word suspicious, but. Six. Six fires. Six, okay. Yep. Do we have a question here? Or? Okay, Jim. Uh, Jim Nash, 18 Montfield. Um, <coughs> Thank you for doing this. This is really great. And I appreciate the, the press release and putting up the posters and getting the information out. Um, this, is, this is really terrific. Um, one of the, the things I got from the, the recent Gazette article was that um, you know they were talking with a woman who is camping in the area that Greg is talking about. And she seemed to think that the fire that occurred there happened because it was you know, one of her neighbors or something like that. Um, and that, um, that, you know, as, as, as you look at the different fires, do you really, do you think they're all related? Or are they, you know, it just, it was two weeks of like, you know, something happened over here and then a kid came, you know, maybe a group of kids came through the neighborhood. Is, is that what your instincts are or? We don't know and we don't want to guess. <laughs> our, well, instincts we want are, to. Know, <laughs> our instincts are really not what we're up here to talk about, you know, and we may have our own personal opinions, but it's really, we're here basing our, what we're sharing with you on our investigations, on our policies, on our goals, on our, you know, collaboration with other agencies. Um, so we, we just don't know. And, and I wouldn't want to say one way or the other. Okay. Thank Sorry. you. <laughs> Please. So uh, where in the order of things does that 10th fire fall? Is it somewhere first in the middle or the end? The first? First. Yep. Yeah, first yep. one. Yep. Anyone else who hasn't mm -hmm. spoken? So, Jerry? Um, I just wanted to comment. One of you made a comment that um, I just kind of want to put your mind at ease about things, about the fires. But um, the earlier fires, they would come in bunches and then stop, and come in bunches and stop. You know, it was a long period of years. So I want to put people's mind at ease, but I also think it's important to say that people should be alert because you don't know when this is going to happen. And we have very bad experience that um, when we thought they were over, they started up. And um, I just want to say that I've been on Bait Street a number of times with business for another organization, and I've seen patrol cars through there a lot the last few days and I want to thank the chief and, and the public safety people for doing that and I know there's other things going on that, that are very appreciated by the board and I hope that you will keep doing that and not be too much at, at ease and too much relief um, but just remember that these can start up again and we've seen it in the past. So. And to be clear, just because there's been any gap doesn't make us any less diligent or okay. anything else. We continue the same level of, of investigatory services that we would, and we're extremely attentive Great. to this issue. We Excellent. talk about it almost every day Great. and see what everyone's up to, uh, what all the different kind of working parts are, are up to each day so we get updated. Excellent. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Anyone else? Ryan? Bobby. So, Whose responsibility is it to communicate to the public, I guess, about this? Because I'm, I appreciate the press release and the, and the meeting, um, but as living in the neighborhood at the time when the Bay fires, um, if this new, ha this is happening again in the same neighborhood um, is quite concerning. And in a way, the lack of an aggressive approach from our town is concerning as a, member of the town in the sense that, I mean, the first I heard about it was on social media, honestly. And um, I feel like if there's a flyer that I, you know, there's no, I didn't know that I could text a, if I knew something, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like if, if I was in charge of, well, I don't know who's in charge of that, but whoever's in charge of communicating, like, I feel like an all call should have gone to the town and we should all have <coughs> that in our mailbox and 
the members in the neighborhood over a few weeks span might have a police officer stop by or drop off literature or, you know just like we get mailed bills something comes in the mail from the town not to instill fear but to instill confidence that the town is aggressively looking at this this incident this recent um, collection of fires have you so, seen the posters that are around um, I, I have not. I mean, I'm commuting. I commute to work. I mean, at the one. Like, I mean, I, yeah. I've seen them in the newspaper. The one on the on the telephone pole. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I guess I walk a lot, so I, I see them all over the neighborhood. Right. But. I mean, and I guess it's sort of like there seems like so many avenues of where people should. There's so many ways to communicate these days, and I don't know if we're necessarily doing that, or our due diligence as a. So I don't know whose responsibility it is, but I feel like there's a lot more that. Could be done to make people feel confident in um, this being handled. So I wonder if there's something the Ward Three Neighborhood Association could do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Like, but is it on their responsibility? I mean, is it? No, it's just. No, I, no, I, I agree. They like should. You try multiple yeah. avenues, and you guys have a really big um, email list, right? His question yeah. is, who in the city would be responsible for getting that information out? Well, I mean, the interesting thing about that is that there's, it doesn't fall on any one person's shoulders. You know, when, when we met, we talked about these, we had concern and we want to share it with the community, so we put out a press release. It's not, there's not an easy flow chart. Uh, that, you know, it points to one person. It doesn't do that. <laughs> so, but we've been, we're attentive to this issue, so any developments, we're, we're, we can certainly convey to City Council O'Donnell, and then, I don't know if you're comfortable with that or, uh, you know, well, I don't know what the best solution is, but we put out press releases and we have something new that rises to the level of need to a press release. You know, we well, had that small report Friday, which didn't really rise to the level of the press release, but it still goes out in our public blogs and is still available and, and certainly the local uh, media outlets picked up on that and, and reported it as well. So if, I can add to that, if I can add to that, just briefly, um, I actually was very pleased that the police department was active and the fire rescue department put out this joint statement. I think that was very much appreciated. Uh, I know the Ward 3 Association broadcast that out. I broadcast that out. Email. You mean they broadcast email? email. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I emailed it out. Yeah. And, um, and this is something that has received a lot of coverage and now, not too long later, we're having a, a community meeting about it. I think that, um, so I, I've actually been pleased about that, but I think that we can always improve and, I, and we can certainly work on specific ways that would be more beneficial um, and help get the message out there because it's important to do. I think it was done, I actually was pleased with the way it was done this time personally, but I concede that we can always do better. So. Brian, do you, do you, does it seem feasible to you to use the robocall, the city robocall to put out this information about how to? I don't know, I don't know that that's my, my judgment to make. My thought about that was I always want to balance that against, um, I think as Mr. Bugger raised, you know, it's a balance between uh, alarm and, yep. and information. Yep. And I certainly wouldn't want to have a reverse 911 call with every drip, drip, drip of information. Right, right. Um, and I think we can actually agree that actually that would, be, that's the, would not be good for the community. But some healthy we do, balance. We yeah. do have a policy on that as well, and it limits it right. to certain types of situations, life-threatening sort of situations, and that's quite honestly because sometimes we've done them and people complain. So it, it is balancing. Okay, sure. With a, you know, we don't want to bother people right. either. Right. It just seems like they're they're really uh, the the other methods are not targeting enough people. Mm -hmm. I don't know what what there would be in between <laughs> of calling everybody in the city and just getting an email out to people who are members of the neighbor of the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association. Okay. Um, do you want to go you first and then Jeff? Just very quickly, I, I think that we have been given more information sooner than any time in the past. So I'm, I'm actually really pleased with the kind of communication we've had so far. We might be better at it, but um, I feel much better informed than I was in 91 or 2007 or the other times. That's good to hear. Thank you. Uh, Jim? Well, I, I, I appreciate the, the press releases, and I would also appreciate it, it, you know, that local media, when they get the pre press releases about fires and stuff in the city, that they show up and write a report. Um, that I 
you know, notice there was delays between your press releases and um, and our local paper actually showing up to do a report. I first read a story from Mass Live, which is the Springfield paper, and so. Um, but I, I think the Gazette is well aware now that you know of the importance of this, and there's a lot of readers in this room. So um, anyway, okay. We have a question here. Um, I'm not sure it's a question, um, but I was just thinking like it, about things we could do. You know, the the neighborhood association and like. You, but you, it's true, you don't want to alarm people. You just want to make people aware so if they see anything suspicious that they get in touch with the police. Because I almost didn't get in touch with the, the incident that I know about. You know, because mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it was mischief. I just, I didn't. So anyway, that's what I'm saying. Is like you want to raise people's awareness but not make them afraid. And maybe that's not that easy a thing to do. Like. Maybe uh, some people, a couple of us could get together and talk about how to do that. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Just have one last one for the chiefs. And I don't want you to give away your sort of investigatory strategy or anything like that. I just just want to be a little bit more at ease. Is there somebody um, so you two said your talk nearly almost daily about about these incidents? Is there one particular person in the detective bureau whose job it is to go after this? So that we know there's one person that they're doing it. It, it. There's a team of people, and it is their job. Okay. And we have. I always get a little fuzzy when it's team because our team is solid. They're it's a good team. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have a fuzzy team. Here, right? we, we have okay. some really good people yeah. All right. uh, on that team. But yeah. like that, there's one person who's like, oh, this is we got to keep moving this ball. Absolutely. Okay. I just. I just wanted to say that um, if this goes on and there's a need for continuous updating, I'll make an offer that I would be willing to work with a bunch of people to put together a plan to reach as many people in Ward 3 as possible. Between the Ward 3 Association and Nextdoor and there's all kinds of other websites, there's all kinds of things out there. If we put them all together, I have an idea we could reach a very substantial proportion of the ward with things that we need to tell them. So if if you feel that would be helpful, I'd be willing to work on it in conjunction with some other people that we would have a some centralized notification system, push a button, send it out to everybody that we need to send it out to, and they can send it out to everybody in the ward. And I'll bet we could reach a very substantial proportion of the ward. Okay. Thank you. We may, we may take you up. Yeah, There's one thing that uh, <clears throat> My name is Fred Zimnock, Ward 3. I lived there for 40 years. There's one thing that still perturbs me from the last incident with Bay. And we had three meetings very similar to the me meetings that we're meeting we're having today. We had the police chief, the fire chief, the mayor was there, and they all talked pretty much the same, said the same thing that you're saying. And right now we don't remember how scary it was that at that time because there were a lot of fires that were being set, small fires, there were car fires, there were house fires, and I can think of at least a dozen that I know of, uh, and I'm sure the DA here probably knows more of those fires than I do. And um, in fact, one of the houses that my mother owned, that burned, and I'm pretty sure Bay did it, although I don't know he actually confessed to it. So it was a scary time, I was very, distressed about it because I was also doing elder care. I had a mother to take care of. And if the house catches fire, she's got Alzheimer's disease. She's not really sure what's going on. I got to get out of the house. I got to get her out of the house. So it was a very uncomfortable time. So when we came to the second meeting or possibly the third meeting, I asked the mayor, I guess, or, or the chief of police, I said, well, what are you guys doing to find this guy? And the chief says, well, we can't tell you because if we do, uh, he'll find out what we're doing and he'll stop or something. And of course, nothing happened to that. But is it at all possible for you to say that, well, we're putting in an extra 40 hours a week, 20 hours a week, an extra 10 hours a day to know that, give us some confidence that you guys are really hustling and doing things on this situation? 
Yeah, I, I can't give you the number of hours no heat curve, <clears throat> and I really can't tell you the, the details of the investigation. Well, that's true. You can't right. tell us what's so going on. We'll accept that. that, but is there some assurance that, you know, you're doing the man hours, they're there, as opposed to having a good team, but the team is really working, <laughs> doing things? We're doing the person hours. We're doing a lot. Of, that, that's what they're assigned to. So when you work in your department, if a person is working on arson, he's billing his time to arson, or he's billing it to patrol, or this thing, or that thing? Some of it. I mean, we don't have the luxury of being able to just take one person or the whole team and have them every moment working on it. I mean, they, they are following up leads and doing what they need to do, and that's really all we can say about it. Uh, but we're very active. So you don't track your hours? We do track our hours, but not by what we're investigating. We have a lot of multitasking going on. That would be challenging. Okay. Okay. Any other any other questions, comments? All right. Well, I'd like to thank you all for being here. Uh, I'd like to thank our public safety personnel. Again, we all thank appreciate you. it. Thank, thank you. We are flyers, and uh, it sounds like. You know, we will be in touch and communication methods might improve, but there will be communication going forward. So please be in touch with me. Again, if you have immediate information to share with the Police Department, you should do so. So thank you very much.